As recently, we've been talking a lot from Matthew 11 and 12 in service, and we've been talking about stewardship. I found this verse that I really like, and I feel it, that it's fitting with what we're talking about. It's Galatians 5, 6. What is important is, is our faith expressing itself in love. When I was growing up in church, church attendance was really important. If you didn't go to church, you probably weren't going to be allowed to do anything that day. Um, and I remember the attendance posters that the teachers would take a, a piece of cardboard and make an attendance poster and you put the little stars on every week that you were at church. So regular attendance has just always been an important thing to me. Even in the Bible, the early Christians were told to meet together regularly to worship. And I heard someone speak on Hebrews 10, and they summarized it as saying that we are to meet together to worship, serve, suffer, and pray. It doesn't specify where we meet. In fact, at the time, early Christian followers were meeting in homes. It says that by meeting together, we encourage each other. Well, we also learn, we grow, and sometimes we just get our faith recharged. What does all this have to do with stewardship? Well, you see, church is where and how I learned about stewardship. Giving of our time and our money, saying we would help and show up, all became second nature to us. Children will watch and learn good and bad from us. They'll learn how much we love our church, our dedication for our church and for God, just by watching us. They'll also learn how important our church is to us by seeing how we, did, how we give up our time and, and money and how we talk about it at home. One of the problems, though, is that for years and years, church-going Christians have prided themselves in their attendance and putting those stars up on the chart and looking at everyone else's stars. Though it is important, isn't there more than that? Isn't there more than stars on a chart? To start, I have two questions. Does it make us better because we are in here on Sundays and not out there? And what does make a good Christian? Where's the balance there? It is more important. There is something more important than just believing and attending church. I'm reminded of James 2.17. Faith without works is dead. It's not okay sometimes. It's not, oh, well, that doesn't matter. It's dead. Dead is gone and not non-existent. So if we have faith without works, do we really have faith? Going back to the study on Hebrews 10, they said in short, it says, we are to worship, serve, suffer, and pray. And yes, it did say suffer. So I went and I read it just to see exactly what it was talking about. Early Christians really did struggle and suffer, and Christians throughout the world and other countries are still doing that. Well, we can worship in here. We can pray in here, sometimes even serve in here. Occasionally we can suffer loss in here together. I'm not sure we really do suffer in here. At times, the early Christians were imprisoned and beaten and much more. We don't have to do that here in this country, though. So maybe we do need to go out there to really see what suffering is about. Out there, within a mile, maybe two at the very most, there is a person who is struggling 
to figure out if they really just fit in. They feel they don't belong anywhere, and they wonder if they really matter at all. There's a struggling parent who may have worked midnight shift last night and won't get much sleep today. They could just use our encouragement and our help. There's an elderly person who can't drive anymore. They're really lonely and they would love to get out of the house. Even more, there are the working poor that work really hard but had struggled, have had to struggle to feed their children and afford appropriate child care, especially in the summertime when school's out. And they love and want for their children just like we do. <clears throat> there are children that don't have beds to sleep on. Some parents will allow their children to sleep on a couch or a futon while they sleep on the floor or in a bean bag. I met this dad last year. And the family who can't afford to go to the laundromat, they wash all their clothes, their towels, their bedding, everything that they need to wash in the bathtub and hang it to dry. And their children are always clean and neat. You would never know. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I met this family last year also. And yes, there are several homeless people, more than we'd really like to know about. Woke up within walking distance of this church this morning, and it's pretty cold out there. Are we better than those people because we're in here, or are we just more blessed? So we sat in our churches every Sunday, <clears throat> putting our stars on our chart, and feeling all good about ourselves. Yet, as people, we find ourselves criticizing the music, the sermon, a child's behavior, or someone's outfit. And instead of working together, sometimes all we can do is bicker. So are we better? You see, if after we worship, we praise God and we pray, we don't take it out there where the suffering is, what kind of Christians are we anyway? Where would Jesus be? In here or out there? And why? Why aren't we inviting all those people in here to love them like Jesus would have done? I was at a Beth Moore conference right after the hurricane in Texas, and she's from Houston. She talked about being one of the lucky ones and feeling really blessed that they really didn't have any significant damage, yet she felt guilty. She started asking God, why? Why me? Why us? Why did we deserve this? And after they talked and they prayed, they decided that maybe, just maybe, they were saved from disaster because they, not because they were better, but because they would go out and help others. With great blessing comes great responsibility. Are we better or are we more blessed? To be a true blessing to other people, it has to start in our heart. Recognizing our own blessings, not fussing about what we don't have, fussing about what we can't afford or how much money we don't make. We all woke up inside this morning we have a bed, we have clean clothes, and we have food. And if there's anyone here that that doesn't apply to, then you and I need to talk later. You see, we need to allow that realization of our blessings to really sink in. Thank God and praise God, and then humble ourselves. Humble ourselves to the one true and only God then it's easy. We just let God's love run out onto other people through us. Again, Galatians 5, 6, what is important is faith expressing itself in love. So what does this have to do with stewardship? 
how do we do this? What does it look like? Well, sometimes it's a little like foster care. And I was thinking about this with Stephen and Tara and with our son, Ryan. Loving others is sometimes opening our heart to being very vulnerable and the possibility of being hurt. We have four ministries here right now. That is part of stewardship is that we participate. We show financial and physical support. And then we just plain are excited about it. Who wants to be part of a ministry that no one's excited about? I don't. With Matt 1128, we're still raising the money to launch this ministry so that children and parents have a place to sleep. We've been told by um, one of the places in town that they could supply us probably 200 referrals a year. If there are four or five shelters in this community, that's a lot of people. So we need to make sure that we're prepared for at least 200 people. So that's why we've been working really hard to um, raise the money and be on our feet before we get those referrals. And as we promote this, though, we should all know what Matthew 11:28 says, because people are going to say, what does that mean? Matthew 11:28, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Food for home will assure that children in our very own community are able to have something to eat for the last two weekends of the month when food and food stamps really are running out. And these kids, I can tell you, will come to school on Monday mornings really, really hungry. As my son would say, hangry. <laughs> because they don't feel good, they're hungry. And for the first time this weekend, on Friday, we sent out 54 bags that went home with children this weekend that maybe they won't be so hangry on Monday morning. Love the children. You know, love the children is much more than gifts and a Christmas party for kids. Most parents want good things for their children, and we can help ease that burden for parents, but it's even more than that. We're showing those children that they're loved and they are important to God. God loves them and they really do matter. God, God would, I think, tell us that we need to embrace our children in our community. Some of them may have not ever have seen any kind of celebration like that except on television. So we're not only sharing God's love, but giving them also a positive experience in a church environment. Last, but certainly not least, our local international and international missions. We know that God's love flows all over the world. Now this congregation alone can't, serve, can't save the world, but I think we can make a world of difference for a few people. Think about this. Think about the lives that we have touched this year. There were two families that this church helped with Impact Massline. We've sent donations and baby bottles to pregnancy support. We had Blanket Sunday, and we sent donations to buy blankets that go all over the world to be used for much more than just blankets. We made health kits, supplies, and sent money for disaster relief. And through our connections with an orphanage in Lakai, Haiti, hopefully 
we've made a difference for approximately 26 children that live there. But for us, when we're in these situations and when we have these experiences, the world becomes just a little bit more real to us. These personal experiences change our lives. They change our views of what true poverty really is and help us to understand people's needs. Help us understand the power of love and God in such places. It reminds me how truly blessed we all are if only that the fact that we were born in the United States. The more we step out there, the more we grow, the more our faith grows. We have tried to get involved in several different ministries over the last few years, and it, it seems like the thing that touches us the most and gets us the most involved are families and children. That's a wonderful place to start and very needed. We're not all strong enough, or for that matter, we're not all called to do foster care, to run organizations that help the needy, or even to go on mission trips. But I tell you, we are all called to love, to love our neighbors here, to love our neighbors far away. Reread Galatians 5, 6 and James 2, 17 we need to do more than carry a title of Christian. We need to do something, and we need to love people. If we come together first as a church community that meets regularly and worships, serves, suffers, and prays together, then we can on a larger scale become a community of believers with other churches and Christians in our community and throughout the world. We will make a difference for a few people in the world. You never know which one of those people is going to go out and help others in a big way. I learned something yesterday. Um, one of the children that several years ago was adopted from Haiti by Vonda. And Vonda came here and spoke one time. And I can't believe it's been eight years ago, but she adopted a boy and girl from Haiti. And the girl, Miss Christy Love, last year she found out that the orphanage she came from was having a lot of trouble. And she wanted to do something to help. And at the orphanage, you know, they, they tell them it's their birthday, and, but they don't celebrate birthdays. The only celebration they can afford is Christmas, and they celebrate Jesus' birthday. And they may each get a gift, but that's a day of fun. They forget just what their conditions are, and they celebrate Jesus' birth. So she decided she would do something so that she could provide Christmas for the other children that are still in the orphanage because she didn't think they were going to get a Christmas. This girl at 17 was doing everything she could to earn money, including getting old furniture off the side of the road that people were throwing out, and she would refinish it and sell it. People started giving her things to refinish and sell. And she earned several thousand dollars that she gave back to the children that were still living where she came from. That says a whole lot. You just never know when you help somebody what they're going to step out and do later. And taking care of this church is an important thing. It is an important part of our stewardship. But taking care of this church is for the purpose of carrying out God's missions, not making us, us comfortable, 
It's for putting our faith to work loving other people. We need to surrender to God all that we have. And sometimes our own will is the hardest thing to surrender. Entering every decision in prayer and faith, saying have your own way, that's a hard thing to do sometimes. He'll guide us, though, if we trust him. The one thing that we have to do, though, is we need to stop wanting it done our way because we've always done it that way before. We have to do things God's way. What is important is our faith expressing itself in love. And how are we going to step out and do that? How are we going to love others 